Nice to see who's your friend. Uh, so you're an ex-Christian, now an atheist. Atheist or agnostic? All right, cool. So I like this question because I like to clarify that there's, with atheism and agnosticism, they're not mutually exclusive. So okay. when people say that they're atheists, you have people who are more gnostic atheists, where they definitively believe that okay. God doesn't exist, or you have the latter part of the definition, which is the doubt of Jesus. So I lean more towards the agnostic side. I don't think we'd be intellectually honest with me to say definitively 100% that I know God doesn't exist. But effectively, how I live my life, my life is good. On, a, like, on, a, on an atheist because I don't, I don't act as if I believe God exists. Mm. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah. So you, you, you don't totally deny God, neither do you fully accept it. Is that, is that, would that be correct? Uh, yeah, well, or would, are you more on the he doesn't exist side? Yeah, yeah if, I, if I was a better man, you would. That would, be that would okay. Be so, Michael, would you say um, that Christianity played, in a, played a role? Because usually what happens is the following Christians think, and ex Christians, they tend to think every religion is like Christianity. So they, what they do is they close the door to all religions. Right. So sometimes what we say is that, I'm not saying with your case it might be that or, or it might I not be. Huh? Please, yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you tell so me? So my background is, I actually grew up in a very Abrahamic household. So although I, my, both my parents were Christian, yeah. my dad was very pluralistic. He was, he was well educated in theology. Okay, so interesting. So he would, in, he would introduce me to like imams, rabbis, people. He would always encourage me to learn about it. Even, have, even come downstairs in the morning. <coughs> Yeah. It would teach you other so okay. I was young at the time. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't know everything in detail yeah. to, to level. Okay. Like, he passed away when I was young. Okay. So I didn't get to so I so from that teaching, that more pluralistic bent of being open minded to various different faiths, yeah. even outside the Abrahamic family. Yes. Religions, I, I I researched. Um I from very early on I was very doubtful of Christianity even okay. before I hit my teens. So what, what was the doubt coming from in Christianity? So what was the main factors of Christianity that made you think it, better atheist agnostic than being a Christian? It wasn't even really Christianity particularly, it was the more fundamental point about God's existence. Really. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's mainly God's existence. Yeah. So it wasn't the concept of Trinity? None yeah, of that. It was yeah. just mainly those God exists. Those, those things also were, were added, but for the, for the most part, I was, for me, I, I like to have the fundamental sort of foundational beliefs. Okay. So to me, the foundational belief is God exists. Okay. That's the, that's, that's the first axiom. Really. Okay. Yeah. Should we start with that? Yeah. So, like, if I can prove to you that God exists, would you accept it? Yeah, well, I have to. I have to. That's that's the um, I'm I'm basic case. Yeah. 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 So, so for me, um, this can also clarify my position. One thing that I realized very early on is I was highly doubtful of the sort of realistic um, aspect of reality. So okay. having like a spiritual and a physical. Mm. To me, I'm a monolith. So I think everything is the same. Like, everything is physical. Uh, or, so are you are you an empiricist? Do you believe that everything, the truths that we have, are our five senses? And not, like, is that your truth? I, I utilize empirical uh, before, but I'm not, I would say I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not open to others. Sort of so do you accept that there are truths outside our five senses? Well, I mean, we don't just perceive things through our senses. Five senses exactly. So, so I think, but all those other perceptual experiences yeah. or tools are also physically based. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I, I, I doubt, or I, have, I haven't produced enough evidence to make that other, because when people exclaim that there's something beyond the physical, to me that seems like a positive claim, and the burden of proof is for them to explain why that is. Okay. I understand intuitively why people think um, things are sort of realistic, because obviously there's different degrees of tangibleness, right? Mm -hmm. There's certain things that like that camera, I can physically touch and yeah. hold. If we talk about mathematics, that's it's abstract. abstract. Right? So people will say like tangibility wise. But as we start to understand the physical world better, yeah. we understand the complexity. So for example, when me and you have a mathematical conversation, yes. we know that the neurologically speaking, mm. there's a physical process mm. that allows us to have that experience. Yes. And so that's that's the physical basis that yes. it's happening. But because it's not something that we intuitively grasp without being taught or educated on it, we more so need to that like, sometimes it's more um, easier to say Oh, this is something beyond the physical. Okay, so so okay, so would you say then you you do incline that there are evidences outside the five senses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't okay. just use the five senses alone. That, for example, senses. dark matter. Yeah. Dark matter we cannot touch, feel, taste, yeah. smell, or we, we, we feel. Use that dark, dark or here. Yeah. So, but we do accept dark matter is there. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, we're we're inclined to believe that that's more more like the case. Exactly. But you haven't seen it. Well, I haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. Yeah, we can deduce it's there. Though. There's a lot of experience. Exactly, but we haven't seen it, we haven't touched it, we haven't felt it, smelt it, or heard it. Is that, is that, is that correct? Yeah, five senses. No. 
but we deduce that it exists. Okay. Now, the same thing can be said about God Almighty. We cannot see, touch, feel, taste, smell. But we deduce and see certain things that allow us to come to conclusions that there has to be a higher power. So let me start off with, I have two arguments. I'm going to go with the contingency argument because I think you're smart enough to maybe, I'm sure you will grasp it. So now there are three types of existence. There is impossible existence, there is possible existence, and there is necessary existence. Yeah? Now, impossible existence is, can we have a triangle circle? So it's an impossible existence. So we are left with two options, a possible existence and a necessary existence, right? So now, possible existence are things that are contingent within our universe. So I rely, I'm a contingent being, means I'm dependent. I'm dependent on other factors for my survival. You could be otherwise. Yeah. I could be otherwise, I could have been otherwise. Our planet that we live in is dependent on other external factors for its survival. The sun, etc, etc, etc for its survival, yeah? The gravitational force. Our galaxy. Our galaxy is dependent on our universe. Right? It looks weird. For its existence. Yeah. And, and our universe is dependent, I would say, on other factors. Like, if we had... There's, there's billions of galaxies. If we took away five billion galaxies, is that still the same universe? No, it's a different universe. So what I'm trying to say is the following. We cannot have an infinite regress of dependent things. So I repeat again. There are things that are dependent, cannot be, can be any other way, yes? And are composed of pieces. We say that it's a logical fallacy to have a infinite regress of dependent things. So I'll repeat again. It's a logical fallacy that we can have an in infinite regress of dependent things. I rely on water and sun. The sun relies on this. The, then the, the, that relies on that. If it goes in infinitely, you cannot have what we have now. So we require a necessary being which is independent and self-sufficient. And it's not composed of pieces. So what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is that this necessary being is what has given rise to everything within the universe and everything that we know. This is only No, so I know, I know about this. So this is, an, this is somewhat similar to sort of like the first mover. Sort of. Prime, prime mover kind of. Prime mover yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah, kind so of yeah. The thing is, even the prime mover argument doesn't properly address it. This is, this is similar to that. It's not that. It's not this. I know, I know yeah. but like... Even with what you're talking about, like necessary conditions and God being a necessary... It has to be necessary. It has, has to be Cannot be any other way. And it is independent and self-sufficient. Right, but for the, the, ax the axiom of that being the case, right, they're following um, features of said God as explained by most of the old religious groups. Mm. Uh, so, for example, oh. if you're just saying on a logical standpoint, there's there's a, there's there's sort of like a necessary um, and um, self-sufficient expression. Yeah. Those characteristics yeah. are uh, alone. Some of people, some of people, 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 where you have disagreements is where people start to add up to it. Yeah. No, we're gonna personify it is after. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get to the first step, which is does a necessary being exist? Let me make it simpler. The universe. Is our universe dependent or independent? Is our, is our universe dependent? Is it dependent or independent? Because I guess for me, I would have to, that's where my agnosis would come to. Like, Ten minutes, bro. I don't know. I don't definitively know all the aspects of our, of okay, our, okay. Of our universe. All right, so think, that's, think. that's why I rest on, on my agnosis, where I say, okay, right now, these, I've, 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 I've seen other arguments explanations. Yeah. These theories here seem to be the strongest, say, for example, Big Bang Theory and the Big Bang Theory. To explain it. But I know that there, there's, there's more survivability within these theories. Okay. So there could be a better explanation to come along. Okay, so, 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 so uh, this, the, the, the argument that I'm putting forward is to debunk all of those. Big Bang Theory goes aligned with the theistic argument because it says that the universe was at one point singular and something gave rise to it, yeah? So what I'm saying is, our universe is very simple. It's either dependent or independent. So either our universe depends on something else for its existence, or our universe is independent. Logically, I mean, it's, it's one of the two. It's not, it's not like a trick question. I know it's not a trick it's, it's, it's basically... I'm, I'm, I'm even thinking of, even more meta-wise, meta is that even... Uh, 
is that even a dichotomy that would work? But even if we work with that dichotomy, I would lean towards it being an independent thing in that case. And I would lean, I would lean towards it being an independent thing in that case. Okay. Okay, so if we say the universe is independent, then remember I said to you there is dependent things, independent things. So what you've done now is you've accepted that an independent being is required. Why would you be a being? Independent. Okay. Why? Which I will come to later, yeah? Because the being has to, for example, why is it something rather than nothing? So that independent thing has to have the willpower to will something. Now the universe doesn't have those properties. So when you say the universe is independent, what you've done in a nutshell is accepted something that's independent. All you've done is ascribe it to the universe rather than the creator. Well, that's because technically the universe does have, have, have beings it, that have it within the universe. It, it the, universe is, the universe is just um, an, uh, an amalgamation of all things that exist. No, exactly, but the universe, what did we say? An in the, a dependent thing is what? Something that's composed of pieces. The universe is composed of pieces, so how could it be independent? Remember I said to you, okay. dependent things are things that rely on something else for their existence. They are composed of pieces and they could be any other way. Could our universe be any other way? Like five billion less galaxies or five billion extra galaxies? Okay, so you're saying that you're talking about going back to necessary Exactly. So right? if, if but, it, yeah, but even but even through the universe as it is now, yeah. for, for all intents and purposes, that's the universe that we have. So Sorry? for all intents and purposes, that's the universe that we all have. Yes. All, 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 all the universe, to me, at least on the on the definitional standpoint, like I said, it's just the amalgamation of all that we have. So even even um, what, what do you mean by amalgamation? What's the definition of that exactly? Uh, so it's a mixture of no. It's, it's just like like literally when someone says the universe, it's anything, all things that exist. Exactly. But 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 what I'm trying to say is my definition of a dependent thing was it depends on something else for its existence and it's composed of pieces and it could be any other way. Can our universe be any other way? Yeah. Of course. So therefore we cannot say it's independent. Because the independent being is self-sufficient, cannot be any other way, and is not composed of pieces. And it doesn't rely on something else for its own existence. It's necessary. So when you said the universe is independent, you gave the attributes of a necessary being to the universe. So the reason why I'm kind of telling you why the universe cannot be independent is because it has the qualities of a dependent thing. Where, where, where we're, gonna, where we're having sort of our, yeah. our, our sort of play yeah. is the point about the pieces. Yes. Because you're so... so pieces and it can be any other way. Yeah, and it can't be any other way. They're the contingent aspects, right? Yeah, it, it can be any other way. A dependent thing can be any other way. I could have not exist. The universe could have not been here. It could, be, it could have been something else. It could be five billion galaxies or trillion galaxies. It could have been any other way. And if it can be any other way, it's dependent. It's not independent. That's my, that's my argument. I'm that's, your, that's your argument. Yeah. But even with, I think you can't really escape the contingent aspect when it comes to our universe. Or even yeah, exactly. That's my but, point. But even when it comes to the whole thing of the necessary, being, because yeah. what I, what I'm now thinking about is what would this necessary be? Um, because obviously, if the, if if this being is necessary, why would it now be able to like, like be able to produce things that are different contingencies. Okay, so what I would say is before we come to that, if we can just come to some simple conclusion, basic understanding, is that firstly we ascribed, you ascribed independence to the universe. Then I said why it couldn't be independent because it's composed of pieces, it could be any other way, and it, um, it is dependent. So why well, I say those two things. So therefore, you accepted two things. Number one, you accepted that something independent is required something necessary and you ascribe it to the universe so which is a good point which is a good start because you're acknowledging we require something independent but you believe that to be the universe i bought two arguments which i said it cannot be independent because it's composed of pieces and it can be any other way which makes it not independent but dependent now if the universe is dependent because of those two points what is it dependent on which we claim is the independent being that gave rise to it now I can tell you why that's personal, and but, but I'm saying, do you follow that? Do you accept this? No, I'm still. I'm, I guess I was still on the message. Yeah, yeah. So, so I just, I just try to repeat. Or no, so, so, so even if I, if I, huh? What? Yeah, what about him? Okay. Okay. No, 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 carry on. So even if I step back again, yeah. Step back, okay, cool. So. Yeah, if you continue to have it, components, right? Yeah, it's made of pieces. Yeah. Right, with, 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 with,
necessity it be dependent on something else. It, it has to be. Yeah. No, I have to. I have to. I have to think if, if that's a, if that's a diet that I have to accept because when it when if something is contingent, yeah, does it now necessitate? Why does it now necessitate, necessitate that it has to have something? It has to because contingency in a nutshell means dependent. It's dependent on something else for its own existence. So what we say is, if the universe is composed of pieces and the universe can be any other way, it necessitates. Do you have water? Uh, no, I'm good. Sure, I'm good. Sure, sure. Okay, no so the thing is, what we say is that necessitates that that thing cannot be independent. It's disqualified of being independent. Because independent, the independent thing being is necessary, it's not dependent on anything, it's not composed of pieces, and it cannot be any other way. Right, but then my thought is, because I'm thinking about it with the whole contingency, like, what about contingency then follows that it has to be in, it has to be um, because even though something can be, what, what is that? Say that again? Even though something has contingency, has why is, even, though, even, even though something has contingency, say that the universe yep, yep, yep. why does it then, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't continue. No, no, please, please, please. Why does it then follow that it has to be? Um, some, some, uh, it has to be something dependent or something else. It's like, why does there have to be an underlying basis of necessity? Well, it, well, it, well, it has to, because the definition of dependency is something that relies on something else for its existence, composed of parts, and it can be any other way. If, if something can be any other way, if I could have been not here, then it shows that I'm dependent. So if the universe or our planet can be any other way, then it shows that it's dependent within its nature. It has to, because how can it be independent if it can be any other way? No, you get what I'm trying to say? Up, but I'm thinking of this going into, it further into ontology about yeah. this nature of existence. Right? Yeah. So, to me, one thing I also kind of um, I'm hard hard pressed to argue against yeah. the idea of nothing exists. Like, like the idea exactly. Of nothing, right? exactly. Like, there always has to be existence. Exactly. So we so, say that has to be the necessary being. But but no, why does that have to? Okay, so. I, I, I guess it's a semantic thing about the, the being as well because yeah. I guess you can expand the, the, the concept of being to something that's not anthropomorphized. Exactly, right. we're, we're, we're going we're to come yeah. to that. We, we don't believe this being is a, a, a you know, uh, has, is made, composed of pieces. We don't believe that, yeah? Right, so, but so, okay, so, then, then it, okay, cool. So then I think you're saying a point, so you said, well, I've heard from a rabbi before, which I guess, a monophys, no, a monophys, a monophys. Um, which I actually want to into, but yeah. I guess you, I don't know if you are one of this, but like, there's sort of like a similar starting point with a one of this, okay. which is like, um, you have, I guess you have this necessary existence. existence exactly, so right? that's what I'm trying to prove, a necessary existence. existence right? But, and everything within that is just a, a part of that necessary existence. Or, or oh, no, 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 God willed it, but he's not, what he willed, yes, for example, in the universe, the things, there are, they're dependent on him. So that's the point I'm trying to make. Because if a universe is dependent, which I've proven, it requires the question this, what, what does it depend on? So this is where we say it has to depend on something that is independent. If it's dependent on something that's dependent, then that thing needs something that's independent. Otherwise we have an infinite regress of dependent things. So if I said the universe depends on this, and you're like, well, okay, is that independent? I go, no, it's dependent. Well, okay, what does that depend on? That depends on A. Okay, what does A depend on? B. Okay, what does B depend on? C, D, e. If we go forever, you'll never have the universe. That's why we say it requires an independent, self-sufficient being that is not composed of pieces and cannot be any other way. It necessitates that. I'll be honest, I, I, I think you have made a strong argument. What, I, what I'm skeptical of, yeah. is, and I'm, maybe I'm, I'm jumping a bit soon, I'm jumping on a bit is sort of some of these, and, and again, this is my this necessary being willing X, Y, and Z. Say that again, sorry? This necessary being being willing to something. Okay, good. So now, 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 if we can, if we can move past that dependent thing and accept that there's an independent thing, then I can tell you why it goes down the route of these attributes, because it then will necessitate that this being has to be personal. It has to require. I can go there, but first, can we accept that? Okay, let's, 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 let's follow, let's follow that. Okay, so so what we see is then. If the universe is dependent. If it's dependent, it requires something independent to make sense and give rise to it. Therefore, now, now this independent thing, once we accept that, you become a deist, not a theist. So it's deist. Okay, there's this thing there. But now I want to make it personal. Yes? Meaning, do you agree that if the independent being is responsible for the dependent universe, that it must have given rise to it? 
But why? My, 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 my thing is, I think there's a bit of a logical gap because yeah. why? First of all, I don't think it's a deistic point to say that there is that there is some sort of necessary existence kind of thing. Because I guess the idea of you can you can accept a necessary being, an independent being, but you can even be a deist. You can say I don't believe it's personal. I believe that thing is just there. So you're at that stage at the moment. No, 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 because I'm even I'm even pushing back on the whole thing of it because what like one could say that whatever you're describing is a necessary a necessary starting point. It doesn't have to be a being. It's a necessary state for existence. For, 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 for instance, because like, that's why I guess the semantics is important because okay. when you say being, yeah. it implies. Some sort of like a, 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 a willing thing, a will, X, Y, Z thing. Exactly. Rather than what I would say is just the amalgamation of this existence. It's like the starting point. Like you have existence. Yes. And that's the starting point. Okay, but we accept. Like, okay, you said we have a starting point. Good. Who started it? Why? Why, why is it? Why it is has. It? To, it has to because you know what? Let me tell you something. A blind process cannot give rise to something. When we talk about you, you know what? Because you said. You don't ever believe in nothingness. You believe that there was always something, right? I'm going with that. I'm going with the argument. When you say there's nothing, there's always something, then that something is either the universe, and what did we do? You said the universe is independent, meaning it was always there. Then I showed you why it cannot be independent and it's dependent. Then from there we said if it's dependent, it requires something independent to give rise to it. But I think, I think even when we have that list of the independent, dependent thing, yeah. I think it becomes an issue of smash because if I see that that necessary thing is just the universe and we have a contingent universe. But, 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 but you said that and that's why you said the universe is independent. And then I said why it cannot be independent. I gave you the characteristics of a dependent thing and we ascribed it to the universe and we said it's composed of pieces and it could be any other way. Therefore, it doesn't qualify to be independent. Now, when you said there is, you don't believe, you don't believe there's, you believe there's no, nothing, there's always something, I agree with you. What we say is that is the necessary being that always existed and gave rise to the universe. Now, what I'm saying the following is, the, 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 the jump I'm, that I'm making is the following. If it gave rise to the dependent universe, that requires a will. It has to will it. It can't, the universe, how did the universe come to be? Did the independent being will it or the universe just said, no, I decide to come to being? Which one makes more logical sense? Why are we even using language of deciding and willing? Why but it has to because the thing is, if look, if the universe is dependent and it requires an independent, an independent thing to give rise to it, if it relies on the independent thing, then there has to be a will. There has I, I, to. I, I, think, I think for me, the reason why I'm, I'm scottish is I think mm. we're, we're slipping into anthropomorphizing no, no, I, I'm not doing that. I, 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 know, I, know, yeah. I, I know that's what you think of it. Yeah. I, I, think, I think what it is for me is that, like, for example, in the language of saying, for example, you build it, something decide, yes. X, Y, Z, yes. thing. I think there's, we as human beings, we're uncomfortable with the idea of a process being critical. But I think all things are ultimately predictable when you understand the physical process behind it. Yes. But from uh, from our standpoint, look unpredictable. But why, hence why I use the term of like a blind process. Yes. Um, I think there are there are there are there are patterns that we can find yeah. within the the, the the physical processes that. Who set the patterns? Well, if there's patterns, who set these patterns? For example, do you accept that there's laws in our universe? Yeah, I, I, I said that we... Okay, who, who set the no, laws? Sorry. These are very important questions. If there is laws and patterns, who set the pattern, who set the law? If there is design, who set the design? These are very important questions because the thing is, this is why we attribute these attributes to the necessary being. Because it doesn't follow that there's a necessary being, he's independent, but the universe just popped into existence without his will. What kind of a necessary being is that? Because then that means there's an agent outside him that is making decisions and popping into existence. This is the reason why we say, for example, the DNA. The DNA is a program, right? It's information. It's, it's information, but I, that's what I'm saying. Like even even the even, this is why I think we have to be careful with the language we use. We yeah. use small things. We use analogies, right? Like when when it rises a computer, it's yeah. to computerize everything. It's yeah. brain to computer. Yeah. Just to say like DNA is like you know yeah. bits and X Y and Z things yeah. yeah. that give us the code. We're starting to learn that those analogies are always like that helpful. Like for example, the, the brain is fundamentally different to a computer the way it operates. There's of analogies course. with it. It's more complex. But it's, it's, there's there's cool. Yeah. So even when we talk about the physical the, the physical universe. Right? Yeah. Or this is, to me, as the universe, everything. Yeah. So when we when we start to use words like law, the reason why we use words like those because amongst human beings in our language, 
we yeah. when we talk about border, we talk about border, yeah. yeah. it's a yeah. thing yeah. because of you know our. You know, our a lot of it does stem from theological, theological, and so I said things. So that's exactly. the language. Yes. However, when you, when you, when you, sometimes you have to decode what the language is and say stuff like, like when we, when I say patterns, yeah. I just literally mean there's a things happen, um, thing, things happen seemingly to us randomly. No, the, of, there's, there's no randomness. No, no, no. The, 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 no, no. It's said, random said, to us. I said, I said seemingly to us. That's yes. what I'm saying. Seemingly to us. But yes. I think, I yes. think where the jump will come, where we have a difference is with someone positing the claim that somebody took the order there. Something, yes, it has to, it follows. I, I don't think that necessarily. Okay, how? So, for example. So that's a positive claim. Okay. Does the, does the DNA have information? Yes, it does that. Okay. If there's information, it requires there to be produced from there, is that it requires intelligence? No, it's an intelligent process, yes. No, no, one second. A book, does a book have information? Yes, it does have information. If there's information, it requires that there is an intelligence behind it. For, for a book? For a book, for the, yeah. For the average book, yes, yeah. all books. A simple book. The most simplest book that says, hello, how are you? We will say that's information. No, but then, but I, I guess someone could put a hypothetical process of like, someone can have a, a random... Uh, mm. So it's the same thing, the same way like someone talks about like the, you know, the, the, the monkey type, right? You know, yeah, exactly, yes, yes. Of like people, yes. That, the monkeys could randomly type things they, they can, having... That's, that's, that's an impossibility. For, operationally, that's impossible. There is impossible for monkeys, if you gave it infinite amount of time, that they would write down Shakespeare. It's an impossibility. The factor that you're going with is if you give it enough time, this will happen. If I have an empty glass and I say give infinite time and we'll have a Ferrari, time is irrelevant to the equation because the elements to make a Ferrari is not in the cup. So the point I'm saying is, Book, a book that is written has information. That means there was intelligence behind it. A DNA is much, 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 much more complex than a mere book. And it has information in it. If there's information in it, it requires there to be intelligence. Am I right or wrong? No, I, I'm, not, I'm not actually disagreeing with that. that the DNA okay, but do you, do, you, do, you, do, you accept, I, do you accept there's intelligence behind it? I think there's intelligence within the process. I just don't okay, think, okay, where, okay, I, I where did the behind that... behind uh, language is, is, is already implying that okay. something... That's yes, but yes, but I understand. But what we're doing is, like you said, we're going into yeah. words like. But it's, it's important. No, it is important. But I'm, I'm, I'm using those words for us to come to base conclusion. Otherwise, I can say the words that you're uttering mean nothing. What do you mean by it or how? What do you mean? If we go into that, it's just going to get really messy. What we're seeing is, if there's information in DNA, it requires intelligence. You said there's intelligence in the process. Why is there intelligence in the process? Why did you say that? Why did you say no? There is no intelligence in the process. You said that because you know the basic, simple conclusion is there's, if there's information, it requires intelligence. Now, the point I'm saying is the following. You have just given an attribute to the Nasir being. It has to be all-knowing. It's intelligence. Because if it's giving rise to something which is its creation, which is dependent, DNA and our universe, then we require it to be all-knowing. We can't be like, oh, the bee knows when it flaps its wing, when the temperature in the hive gets hot, it starts flapping its wing this way, and then it flaps the opposite way when it gets too cold. That is intelligence. If there is intelligence, there is an intelligent, a knowledge giver. So this is the reason why when you said about the attributes, why do you make God personified? Because what we see is it requires that. Just the way with dark matter. We cannot see, touch, smell, feel or hear it, but we deduce that it exists. Why? Because I'm using the same argument. We have to give these attributes to God. Why? Because number one, the universe came to be that requires a being that has a will to give rise to the universe, it's simple logic. And now if that's the case, it has a will. Okay, acceptable. Then there's knowledge in the universe. Then it has to be the all-knowing. How can it give rise to something that it doesn't innately possess? So we say, then it has knowledge. It has to be all-knowing. Do you see how we now then start giving attributes to God Almighty? He has a will, he has to be the all and there's other factors that we give him. This is why we personify it, because it necessitates that. 30 minutes. Okay, we'll, ra we'll wrap up, but the point I'm trying to say is that there is strong evidence, and I, and I thank you for your time and your sincerity, I really admire it. Thank you very much for your time. But it's a really, if you think about it, bro, what's your name, I forgot your name? Huh? Michael, if you think about it, Michael, obviously I don't know your personal experiences you went through, whatever it may be, but there is very, very strong evidence to God Almighty existing. And this is just one of it. There's many examples, argument from fine tuning, argument from the Kalam Cosmos. This is just one argument that I've used. But if you think about it, bro, just as we look at a painting, even if I never ever saw the painter, I will know, wow, that's beautiful. Oh, wow, look how he's 
whatever it is, drawn that, I start giving attributes to the painter just by looking at his painting. And to me, I just think, to, to me, this is this a kind of applying my own phrase of it, yeah. simple definitions. Yeah. To me, it seems more applicable for us to improvise that particular thing rather than saying the simpler thing. Because we're talking about the, the, the attribute of intelligence. Yes. Right? Yes. So to me, I just see that as, okay, cool. We have, we have the same way that when we talk about the ecosystem. The ecosystem is the amalgamation. Of all no, the but there's order. The, 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 cycle this is not randomness these are things that are set. these are laws I, I hear you but I because otherwise you can never do science for example we have regular regularity uniformity otherwise we can never do science because if imagine if we was going to do an experiment and something just popped and it's, and it's irregular you can never even do science no but science science is not mutually exclusive to randomness though, because randomness mm. and science there is no randomness if you're a scientist you don't believe in randomness or chances no, 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 but what i'm saying is randomness in scientific terms only this means unpredictable no no, no not really if you know it, it all is, the, is, for is, example if i flip a if i flip a coin to a scientist and i say heads or tails if he knew the if he knew the angle i'm flipping it at and if he knew all the uh, factors around yeah. it he would know exactly what yeah. the, there is no such thing as chance so he would know the exact results once he once all the factors pertaining to it. Therefore, chance doesn't even exist. You're a hard determinist. You'll be a hard determinist. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. So if you're a hard determinist, then who's the determiner? Because if, if you're a hard determinist, that means that if you go back to the end, there is someone that determined it all. You can't be a hard determinist and say everything has exactly been willed. Okay, but who set this? Who set this law? I guess, I, I guess I guess I think a lot of, we have a lot of common ground on certain yes, yes, things, but I think my 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 reluctance is to is this this is arguing about and you don't think that's an argument. No 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 we're not, we're not, we don't believe God is a man. We do not believe that God is composed of pieces. We don't, we don't. I'm not saying that you're saying that, but yeah. even aspects, even smaller aspects of life, you know, are determined or determined or but, 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 but it follows just the way dark matter we follow it by not seeing it and we deduce that. I'm just doing the same thing by saying it necessitates these stuff. <laughs> it's a pleasure, man. I really enjoyed it. Come, come see me Sundays, I'll be here every time. But you're, you're a sincere person, man. I would say, look, just pray. Just say, look, you know what, God, if you're there, show me a sign. Just guide me. You've got nothing to do. Just try it. I did this about 13 years ago. I mean, I grew up, again, I grew up with this. I've done the praying thing. Try, try to him, God Almighty. If you are there, if there is a true religion, can you please guide me? If you're sincere, bro, God's going to guide you. I promise you. I, I, def I definitely hear you, but I definitely Try it, you, you got nothing to lose. Well, that's, that's, I guess that's the, what's, what's, what's it, pastor's wage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm, just, I'm, just saying, I'm not saying accept the religion, I'm just saying the, the prayer. No, no even, even the spiritual process of, yeah. of praying and all them type of things there. I, for me, I see it, I, to me, I see like, for example, someone praying and having, you know, using their time to focus on a particular aspect of their life. Yeah. Well, well, it's, it's, it, to me, it looks like another view of my thoughts. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but, but I would say try it by yourself too. I yeah. can't really force I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Thank I'm, you, man. It's my first time here. Nice good, man. You come more regular. Yeah, I'll, I'll come for you. <laughs> Thank you, man. Take care. Like your name, man. Look after Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you, man. Yeah. Summarize. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It was very interesting. I mean, it's very sincere. I, re I really like speaking to sincere people. Um, and yeah, look, we had a differences. It was thought provoking. And, you know, we learn from each other. And I think, you know, there's some things that he's going to be thinking about, inshallah. So, till next time, from Salam Kona, Assalamu Alaikum, Barakatul Alaikum.